absolute pledge. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for his kingdom and saints. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty for all who believe. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible. God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Character, quality, respect. Respect. Treating everyone as valuable and deserving of all honor. Character, quality, discretion. Discretion. Recognizing and avoiding words, actions, and attitudes that are wrong for a situation. Thank you. You may be seated. Boys and girls, I want you to think back to last week's chapel. Mrs. Craver's class shared with us about the instructions that Jesus gave his disciples and really gave us right before he ascended into heaven. What was the name of those special instructions? What was the name of them? Kyle, what were they called? Yeah, the Great Commission. But what's that mean? What is the Great Commission? Maverick, what's the Great Commission? Yeah, to tell others about God's Word, to tell others about Jesus. And I thought, you know what? We have the perfect opportunity to do that. We have the perfect opportunity to tell somebody far, far away about God's Word, about Jesus' love for them. Let's think. If you've gone to the library this week, you've talked about it. Moms and dads, grandmas, grandpas, don't worry. We're not all getting on a plane and going to some foreign country in the next couple of weeks. But what have we talked about? What's an opportunity that we have to tell somebody far, far away about Jesus. Right now, we have that opportunity. Anybody know? What is it? Sarah, what is it, babe? I'm sorry, Catherine. Sorry. You know what? When you're as old as Mrs. Dozier, sometimes you call people by their sister's name. Sorry. Operation Christmas Child. That's right. Operation Christmas Child. You guys have talked about the opportunity to give a shoebox, to prepare a shoebox in the next couple of weeks, and then you'll bring it to school that week right before we get out from th for Thanksgiving. Now, talk to mom and dad if this is something that they would like for you to do and for your family to do. And then I thought of something else. This is something that the Dozier boys, we didn't do it every year just like this, but sometimes we would do it like this. They had special jobs around our house that they could do. We found some extra jobs for them to do so that they could make a little bit of money and they would use that money to help pay either for some of the stuff that went inside or for how much it costs to send the shoebox. That's a perfect opportunity we have right now to live out the Great Commission. Okay? Now, today, Mrs. Berry's class is going to talk to us about how to live that out, not super far, far away, but right here. How to share Jesus' love with the people right around me, especially when I'm having a little bit of trouble with the people right around me. I'll go ahead and raise my hand. How many of you ever have trouble with the people right around you? I do sometimes. A conflict, maybe something you're kind of arguing. Go ahead and put your hands down. Mrs. Berry's class is going to help us know what do we do? How do we share Jesus' love and be more like Jesus in those moments. Okay, so let me pray for Mrs. Berry's class, and then they're going to lead us. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you for this day. Father, thank you for your word that is rich with instruction for us. 
and you tell us in your word, and you said it to your disciples, Jesus, go and tell other people about me. Help us, Jesus, to be hearers of your word and doers. Help us to do that. Father, I pray today as we listen to Mrs. Berry's class that we're reminded of things that we can do right here with friends right now to share your love. Jesus, I thank you for these kids that have worked so hard, and I pray that you would help them to remember the things they've practiced. Jesus, if they have any butterflies in their tummy, I'd pray that their butterflies fly in unison and they feel calm and ready to share your word and your truth with us today. Jesus, as the people listening, I pray you'd give us ears that want to hear and soft hearts that want to obey. Father, thank you for Mrs. Berry, who's worked so hard. Thank you for these kids. Thank you for their moms and dads who have listened to them and worked with them at home. Jesus, we love you, and we commit our chapel time to you. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Help me welcome Mrs. Berry's fourth graders. and welcome to Grace Community Live. I'm Lily Richardson, and today we are covering FriendFest 2020. That's right, FriendFest, where school kids show what friendship really means. We have three guest announcers in our studio today who have covered FriendFest in the past years. As you're watching and listening, see if you can tell when these fourth graders change their actions to show us what friendship really is. Our first guest announcer of the morning is Isaac Stevenson. Isaac, what do you have for us today? In our first event here at FriendFest, we've got some kids showing the importance of how powerful words are and how much they can hurt somebody. Now they've been studying all year, guarding their tongues, studying the dictionary, and getting help from the coach Jesus. I've just heard that they're about to start. Let's watch and see some friendship in action. Did you see what the new girl, Kinley, is wearing today? Who wears white after Labor Day? I mean, really, it is November. Put the white pants away already. <laughs> hey, do y'all want to play Foursquare? We only need two more people. Um, no, we're already playing a game. We're like, no way. Hey guys, you need to be nice to the new girl. How would you feel if someone is mean to you? And anyways, white pants are a style any day. Everyone knows that. I wear white pants all the time. I'll probably even wear them on Christmas Day. I think Kinley looks so cute. Hey Kinley, we're so sorry. We really do look cute today and we would love to play four square with you. Please, please forgive us. Sure. Let's play four square and maybe get some ice cream after school. That's a great idea. Hey, Kinley, by the way, I love your new outfit. I love your shirt. That color's superb on you. Me too. Thank you. Wow, for a second there, I thought that that was going to end badly. But they really turned it around and showed us what the Bible says in Ephesians 4.29. Yes, it says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Let's check the replay at the place where they fixed what was wrong. Hey, Kenley, we're so sorry. You really do look cute today, we, and we would love to play four square with you. Please, please forgive us. Sure, let's play four square. Maybe get some ice cream after school. That's a great idea. Hey, Kinley, by the way, I love your new outfit. Boom, there it is, the sorry moment. It's a hard thing to say, but it saves the day. I love it. This is what Friend Fest is all about, folks. Now let me introduce you to the next announcer of the morning, Slade Etheridge. <laughs> Thank you, Isaac. Next up, we've got an intense game of Friendship Foursquare. Looks like they're all warmed up and ready to go. Let's bounce over now and see what happens. That was on the line. You are so out. 
No, it wasn't. It was in your square, dude. Here we go again. Beck is right. It was on the line. Yeah, stop making excuses. You're out. Let's take a vote and see who's out. <laughs> Fine. I'll take my phone somewhere else. Why? Now <clears throat> none of us can play. Well, because you said I was out. If I'm not, everyone's out. But George, can't we take turns and play together? Yeah, we always have so much fun playing together. Hey guys, I need to tell you something. I'm really sorry. I should have let someone else be king. Will you forgive me? We forgive you. We all make mistakes sometimes. It's okay. We should catch up with the class. Let's, Let's play again tomorrow! Oh yeah, they've got friendship game all right. That's the way it's supposed to be. In Philippians 2, 3 through 5 says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest, but to the interest of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same attitude of mind that Christ Jesus had. Thanks for showing us how to put others first like Jesus did. And now, a word from our sponsors, Friendship Fixers. Do y'all ever have a problem with your friends or even family members? Does conflict sometimes creep into y'all's relationships and y'all don't know what to do? Boy, have we got something for you. It's called Friendship Fixers and this is how it works. First, if you have a problem with a friend, go to your friend. Second, remain calm and explain what is broken. Third, investigate what is wrong. Fourth, extend an apology. Fifth, ask for forgiveness. And finally, do forgive freely. And you can even remember this tongue twister to help you remember the important truth about friendship and forgiveness. At no extra cost, it goes like this. A friendship is fully fixed when forgiveness is found. With friendship fixers, you can never go wrong. And this program is offered to you today by the ultimate friend, Jesus. He gives us wisdom and power to fix our friendships when they are broken because he is the ultimate friend. Try Friendship Fixers today. Welcome back to GCS Life. I'm Nora Carter here on the scene helping cover Friend Fest 2020 and talking about being a good friend. Today we have come to the final event focusing on one of the most important aspects of friendship, forgiveness. In Colossians 3.13, it says, Bearing with one another and forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. It is so important to do the right thing and be a good friend. But if we never choose to forgive, we're truly not being a good friend. Let's watch as James and Calloway do with this very subject, forgiveness. I've been waiting to check this book out. It's finally on the shelf. That does look like a good book. I'm so excited to finally read it. Well, I'm first. Hey, I don't want this book. I want the book I had. I had it first. James, give it back. <laughs> nope. I thought you were my friend. That was my book and you grabbed it away from me. You know, Kelly, you are my friend. What kind of friend would I be if I stole your book? Here you go. You take it. You're right. You had it first. I'm sorry I tried to get it for myself. Will you forgive me? Yes, I forgive you. I'm glad you're my friend and we're able to work it out. I'm too. Oh, yeah. That was awesome. It was such a good example of how Christ forgave us. Let's, re the, let's replay the part when Callaway forgave James for taking the book she really wanted. You know, Callaway, you're my friend. What kind of friend would I be if I stole your book? Here you go. You take it. You're right. You had it first. I'm sorry I tried to take it for myself. Will you forgive me? Yes, I forgive you. I'm glad you're my friend and we're able to work it out. I am too. Oh yeah, that's what I like to see. Thanks guys for that amazing example of forgiving a friend. Now, back to Lily. Boy, these kids really put on a great show of good friendship. I know I'll think twice about how I treat my friends next time. Remember, if you have a friendship that's not going so well, you can always forgive. 
because the Bible teaches us to forgive 70 times 70 times, 70 times seven times. So get your calculators out and start forgiving. Also, remember to think before you speak and act. God tells us in Philippians 4, 8, that whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. We want our thoughts and words to always honor the Lord. We hope you will remember today's events and do the same in your life. And now, ending our time here at Friend Fest 2020, it's the Grace Community Friendship Choir singing a song about the importance of our words. See you next time. <laughs> Wonderful job. Didn't they do a great job? All right. I need everybody looking and listening. This chapel is very important to you and to me. 
and to parents because all of us are going to have conflict. There's going to be a time when we have an argument with someone or things are not going well or something's broken and it's just wrong. And the reason is because we have a sin nature. The bottom line is we want it our way. We want it first. We want it better. We want you to do what we want. And that's the reason that we sometimes get in conflicts. But they gave you six steps to work through it. These six steps will really help you. Listen to them. The first one. You go to the person that you're having the problem with. Did you hear that? You go. The next thing. You remain calm and you explain what's wrong. You don't get ugly about it. You remain calm. Then it said, did you see he had a magnifying glass? Investigate. Investigate who's responsible. What do we need to do? Who did the wrong thing? Then the person that did the wrong thing needs to extend an apology. Now, an apology is saying that you're what? Sorry. Now, I'm going to tell you because the next one, it almost sounds similar. It says, ask for forgiveness. But here's the thing. When you do something hurtful and sin against someone, sin requires forgiveness, not I'm sorry. I'm sorry is really saved for when it's an accident and you didn't mean to do it like you stepped on somebody's toe or something. But when you sin and hurt someone, you've got to have forgiveness. It requires forgiveness. So extend the apology, ask for forgiveness. Will you forgive me for? And the last thing, the person that got wronged, like they, they didn't do anything, but somebody did something wrong to them. This last one is for you. Forgive freely. Now, what that means is, if you say, I forgive you, that means you don't bring it up again. You don't keep saying, remember the time that you were mean to me? You don't say that. If you forgive freely, you don't bring it up. Now, here's a little trick for you guys in third grade and second grade. Sometimes the enemy will cause you to think about it and bring it up for you. And you just tell him, I've already forgiven them. So this is very important because I'm going to tell you, did you know that today you could have a conflict with someone at recess? You could have a conflict with someone at home. You could have a conflict with your teacher. You need to know these steps. And I have to tell you, moms and dads have to know them too. Because I'm probably going to have a conflict today. It's not just you. It's all of us. This is the way to handle it. Listen to it one more time. Go to the person. Remain calm and explain what's broken. What's this word? Investigate. Somebody was with me. The next one is extend an apology. That means you're going to say, I'm sorry. And the next one was ask for. That's what you need when sin is in, is in the picture. And the last one, if you were the person that was wronged, what do you have to do? Forgive freely. Do you bring it up again? No, because that means you didn't forgive. You forgive freely. If it comes up in your head again, you just tell the enemy, Satan, not today. I've already forgiven them. And you let it go. Okay? Remember that. You're going to need it today. Miss Burton's going to end our chapel today with a, our hymn of the month. It's brand new. We've only sung it one day, but I'm hoping you guys know it. So stand. It should be pretty familiar, teachers and parents that are here. I'm expecting y'all to sing out with us. It is well with my soul.
thank you so much, boys and girls. Let's give Mrs. Barry's class one more hand. Excellent job today. Thank you, friends, and you are dismissed.